All right, in this video, I'm going to show you uh, how to take advantage of a beginner bot. So Maximum is rated at 1,000, and 1,000 is still a, a beginner uh, level chess player. Um, it's breaking into, it's getting closer to the lower level intermediate levels, but it's still a beginner level, but it's like top beginner, I would say, if that makes sense. So there's still a lot of holes in a 1,000 rated player's game, a lot of holes, a ton of holes. So I'm just gonna teach you how to exploit that and show you pretty much how easy it is to beat a 1,000 rated player. I'm saying this again because I know most of you, I know this because I'm a chess teacher and I, and I just know most chess players or aspiring chess players are probably, I mean, around 600, 700, 800 to 1,000, but probably even lower than 1,000 when they're just starting out playing chess. And they're like that for a couple of years sometimes. And they, they see 1,000 or 1,100 players, 1,200, as these really strong players and like this really tough mountain to climb. And I tell them all the time, you can easily just soar your rating hundreds of points. And I've done this with my students numerous times just by just giving them basically a couple of pointers. Just basically, and what I say is I do pretty much like three, three basic pointers, I tell them. Develop your pieces. Look for your opponent's threats, and then if they don't have any threats, look for your own opportunities, and and then do that by looking at forcing moves first. And if you don't have forcing moves, use threatening moves. If you don't have that, then find a way to improve your pieces. Basically, I mean, easier said than done. But basically, this is I'm going to start the game now. Uh, there's a ton of basic things that the thousand rated player is not doing. So, okay, so I'm, I'm attacking the pawn here right out of the opening. Okay, good. So he defends it. Okay, so far so good. I just simply develop my pieces. So I'm getting all my pieces off the back rank. That's all that means by development. It means I'm taking all my pieces off the starting position and castling. That's, that's my goal. Okay, this is uh, preparing to get my bishop out. So that's a developmental move. Okay, <clears throat> all right. He's just playing d5. That's playable. He can take there. His knight's being defended by the queen. Again, I'm developing my knight. My knight's defended by the pawn, so if he takes, I can just take back. Okay, uh, interesting. Now he's actually have, has a threat here to triple my pawn. So he would take here, I take back, then he takes my bishop, then I take, then he would take my queen, I would take his queen, and I'll be left with triple pawns, and it would be his move. So we don't want that. So I'm just going to simply move my bishop back. That that series, uh, that calculation, right, all that led to just bishop b3. So bishop b3 is a quiet move that stops all that. How do you see that? There's no magic potion. There's there's nothing. If someone's selling you that online that, you know, you can gain a 1,000 points by doing this, you know, don't don't listen to them. Okay, I mean, I have guidelines that, to tell people how to get better. And I, and I say, and I just said before, it's very easy to gain hundreds of points. But you have to also work on your tactics. You have to work on your vision. So you have to see the threat. That's one. But how do you see the threat? You have to work on your tactics. You have to look for your opponent's forcing moves all the time, just like you have to look for your own forcing moves. And you have to be able to calculate and to see what that, those forcing moves are going to result in. Okay. So here I just castle. And uh, I'm assuming he's going to castle. Okay, so he's, he's playing pretty well here. Okay, I'm just going to develop my rook and attack this pawn. So now, okay. So already um, there's a mistake made. So I was attacking the pawn twice. So there had to be a move here to like, to protect it. Either this move or, or the queen move or the bishop move here, adding another defender. I'm not gonna take the knight because if I do, then he just takes back and his pawn's not there anymore. However, I am going to take the pawn. So now I just want a pawn. Okay. What else here? Um, okay, I'm going to, let's see here. I'll just develop my bishop. Okay, now he's attacking my, my knight. All right, I can just move it out of the way and attack his queen. And I'm attacking his knight. So if we go back, okay, I was attacking his, his knight with this developmental move and he attacked my, my knight. Now, I could have even taken his knight right here, simply as that, and just defended the knight. But I did this, this move, a little sneaky move, attacked the queen and kept the attack on the knight, see what he would do. And uh, he, he made it even worse for himself. He, didn't, he should have defended the queen here, but instead he just dropped the queen. So again, 
A thousand rated players is very easy. They're simply not seeing your threats. They're simply not asking themselves, um, my silicon friend here is not asking himself, what's my opponent's threat? He's not seeing what I did the last move. It's just a one move attack. I move my knight. He should be asking himself, he moved the knight. What is his knight attacking now that it wasn't before? If he simply asked himself that, he would see that my knight was attacking his queen, and he would have moved his queen. He was already in a tough position there because he was forked. I was attacking his knight as well. But he shouldn't have let himself get into that position. Okay. So what am I, what am I going for now? Okay, so his bishop's defending his knight. Let's say if I drop my, my knight back and attack his bishop with check and then try to get this. Okay. So right now he's defending pretty well. Um, what would he do about this move? I'm attacking his bishop, his bishop. So again, he made a mistake. He should have taken my bishop first, and after I take, then move the bishop away. So now his, his knight's just not defended. Um, and now I can just simply take the knight. So he just dropped the queen and a piece, and this is not looking good for him. Okay, again, I have a discovered attack on his bishop. So wherever I move my knight, I'm attacking his bishop. Um, just naturally attacking his bishop. Okay, so what can I do here? I could play this first. I could add more pressure, develop, develop a piece, and just add more pressure to his position. Now I'm threatening this take and this take. Okay, so again, just simple tactics. It's called removing the defender. His knight's defending his bishop. My queen could take the bishop if his knight wasn't there. So I simply look at the forcing moves I have, right? Bishop takes knight. He takes, I take. In this position, actually, it looks like he can win a knight or uh, get his piece back, actually. So let's see. Do I have any tricks here? So I take, he takes. So actually, he was able to get his piece back there. So actually, that was a decent move by him. But I think I want a pawn there, at the very least. And also, I got a good position with this move. OK, he's attacking my knight. And I can attack his bishop, though. So if he attacks, if he takes my knight, I take his bishop. So that's what Gotham Chess would call danger levels. So I defended by using that. If you want to use his system on the danger levels and how he does it, it's a, it's a very good terminology. I think it, it's catchy. Um, I'm basically just looking for an equal or greater threat. If I can make an aggressive move and defend, I'd rather do that than make a passive move and defend. Basically, that's what danger levels is. That's how I, that's how I would interpret it. Okay, uh, let's see. What to do here? Do I just threaten mate? Is it that simple? Or do I take here, sacrifice, then check, and then come here? Let's see. So I could just, for this video, we'll just play it safe. All right, we won't do anything too crazy. All right. So I'm threatening checkmate. So, okay, he just gave up checkmate. So, so I don't even have to do anything spectacular here. Uh, it's just checkmate. Okay, so what was I looking at here? Basically, I was looking at, if you go into the analysis mode, um, I was looking at some, uh, some, <clears throat> let's see. Can I go back? Oh, I can't go back, I'll show you on the screen. But well, basically, I was just going after a, a forced sacrifice with the rook. But for the sake of the video, I want to see how you would defend. And the 1,000-rated player didn't defend the one-move mating attack. So again, if you're under 1,000, if you're aspiring to be 1,000, uh, it's not hard. There's a ton of holes that 1,000-rated players have in their positions. Just uh, simply ask yourself, what's my opponent's threat every time they move? Develop your pieces. And on, your, on the offensive side, look for opportunities. And we do that by looking for forcing moves first. If we don't have forcing moves, we look for a threatening move. If we don't have a threatening move that will win material or checkmate, then we go for an improving move, a simple improving move, which is like a developmental move. Okay, and in order to see that, in order to calculate, you have to work on your tactics. So tactics, tactics, tactics. Work on a lot of puzzles. Uh, try to solve as many puzzles as you can and try to get your rating your tactical rating at, at least to 1800 to make sure you're a sharp tactical player so you can see these forcing lines so you're not missing anything. All right, that's it. If you like the content, please uh, drop a comment down below. See if I can improve anything or you disagree with anything or if I missed anything in this video or uh, if you have any questions or anything like that. 
And uh, please like and subscribe. All right. Later.